Video games cause violence. They will make you crazy. They will ruin your life. Or how about... no? These are some of the sentences that people are throwing around when coming to the subject of video games. And uh, in a lot of cases you hear in general, no, they don't cause violence, they don't make you crazy and all that. But I haven't seen any exact examples, exact positive examples, what is good about video games and how they can improve things actually and how they are beneficial in multiple ways. So I thought about making a video and hopefully I can make multiple of these uh, for various games. And first of all, I wanted to get into Sifu. Video game came out a couple of years ago and uh, was quite a surprise for me. Hi, I'm Kalman Carvey and welcome to... I jumped into Sifu expecting a frantic fighting experience with a mountain of homage to various action movies. And after having my behind kick several times and getting utterly stuck at uh, some points for weeks, I started to pay a bit more attention to the details of the game, to the different mechanics and semi-hidden tricks. Little did I know that this was my first step on the road to some unexpected life lessons. A stylized, almost simplistic fighting game with life lessons, which inspired several people on YouTube to share their experiences, now, that is something different. On the surface, the game is about a kung fu student taking revenge on the people who ended the life of his father, and actually his. But he came back to life thanks to a bunch of medallions on a string. Now, this is one of the most unique elements of Sifu. You see, whenever your character would be ended, he comes back to life losing first one year, then two years, then three, and so on, until the protagonist stands as a very strong but fragile 70 plus years old person. The medallions get destroyed one by one for each decade lost this way. When you reach the age of 70, the final medallion shatters, meaning the next time uh, there won't be a next time. Surprisingly, the various techniques of fighting are interesting self-contained little lessons for approaching problems in your life. Since this is a fighting game, you might jump in fists flailing and trying to beat everyone before they even have a chance to blink in your direction. Nice idea. Might work out for the first couple of opponents, but very soon you'll face fighters who will block, parry and avoid all your moves. Others will work with their pals and interrupt you from various angles, tripping you, throwing stuff at your head and in general making short work of your hasty approach. So just like in real life, all out aggression is not the answer for a long prosperous life. You'll just flurry yourself into needlessly unpleasant situations. Then we have the defensive move of simply blocking. You can block almost every attack and not lose any of your health, but this only works until your structure holds. Whenever you block an attack, a bar at the bottom starts filling up, and when it fills uh, and goes red, the next block attack will break your structure and you will take actual damage. A lot of it. Also, this defensive move is not doing anything too your opponents. They will just keep hitting you until they break through and it absolutely does nothing against grabbing attacks. So the lesson is, if you just keep guarding yourself and hope for the bad things to go away, it's only a matter of time until you break and everything collapses around you. The next move, called Avoid, seems like a much better solution. You simply dodge and weave out of harm's way. Seems fine, since you take no damage at all. Your structure is not just not impacted by it, but is actually regenerating while avoiding attacks. Also, if you successfully avoid the last attack in an opponent's combo, you can quickly punish them with a few punches yourself. But this method has a downside as well. Avoiding, just like blocking, does nothing to your attacker. Apart from the occasional punishment openings, they will simply try to sweep your legs and charge at you from multiple angles. You can keep avoiding much longer than blocking since defense will not break, but you as a player might make a mistake since the opponents are not getting reduced in number. Soon you will find yourself in the middle of an angry crowd where you will have difficulty even seeing what is going on. What is the life lesson here? If you keep avoiding things, be those unpleasant situations, actual problems or various tasks, they will overwhelm you. Since you are not dealing with them, they are not going away. And like in the game, when you find yourself under a mountain of attackers, you will find yourself under a mountain of problems, which 
could have been resolved earlier if only you would have dealt with them in time instead of dodging around. Then we have the defensive move of parry, the most effective method if you can master it. Parry doesn't just stop incoming attacks, it prevents your structure from breaking, it prevents you from taking damage to your health, and it actually impacts the structure of your opponent. If you can time it properly, you can simply make your attackers beat themselves on your parries. Their structure breaks and you don't have to throw a single punch before doing the takedowns. Parry in this case means exerting the least amount of energy at the right time to have the most amount of impact. If you keep stressing about problems and you constantly keep your guard up, you will break and won't be able to take any more. If you keep avoiding your problems, you will be overwhelmed and nothing will improve. But if you exert just enough energy to deal with the current issue, giving it all your focus in the sense of timing, you can deal with that issue and move on to the next one. It will not exhaust you, it will not break you, and it will not start to pile up on you. Also, to be good at parrying, you had to learn to recognize incoming attacks. Just as in real life, you should not only recognize a problem when it reaches its fullest form, but recognize the signs of a developing situation. Of course, this needs practice, but that is your life's experience. If you ended up in a bad situation, think through how you ended up in that and what led to it. Next time, you'll be able to deal with that same kind of problem much easier when it starts developing. But naturally, Perry also has a weakness. If someone charges at you with the intent to grab you, that is kind of a soft attack. There is no strike or kick to parry, actually. In real life, these would be situations which cannot be dealt with head-on. They would cause permanent effects, injury, some sort of massive loss in your life, which cannot be reversed at all, so they must be avoided. For these, recognizing the initial signs of trouble is crucial. Apart from the basic techniques, we can also learn a bit from the use of weapons and various items in the game. You can pick up staffs, bats, bladed weapons, throw bottles or bricks, which can disorient and hurt your opponents quite significantly. But of course, this increase in damage and reach comes at a price. A lot of the skills you unlock will not work with the different kinds of tools. Suddenly, you become more and less dangerous at the same time. Also, if you get used to using them, you'll be at a disadvantage the moment someone sweeps your legs and disarms you. These weapons also break after a while. You can increase their durability and usability with skills and shrine gifts, but no weapon lasts forever, especially not when facing the bosses. Interesting how the shrine gifts put the pressure on you to unlock the weapon durability as quick as possible before reaching the age of 25, but with that you only have longer lasting weapons, but no increased structure or more impactful parry. It could work out for you, but still, the moment someone knocks the weapon out of your hands, you are at a disadvantage. What would be the life lesson here? I would say, do not depend on things. Improve yourself instead of your tools. Of course, you do need quality tools in life to a degree, but never fall into the trap of thinking a better version of a tool will magically solve everything for you. The fanciest hammers can still bend nails if used by untrained hands. Speaking of training, the skill tree itself is also quite interesting. Whenever your character is knocked down or you reach a shrine, you have the chance to increase your skills. Selecting one for the first time unlocks it for your current run, but increase the same skill multiple times and you unlock it permanently. Each skill or technique has its use and can be quite beneficial. But which one should you prioritize? Which one can help you most in your gameplay? Just like in real life, when you have to choose your studies to determine the path you want to take, it is not easy. Are the focus absorbing special attacks worth it? Or the combos which can leave the opponent stunned or knocked on the floor? Which techniques can be used on which opponent is also a bit of a gamble, since some are either very good at dodging, parrying, or are by nature immune to certain moves. Here comes the reminder. This is a game. You do not have to do it perfectly on your first run. Basically, unless you are some hyper-talented person, you'll most likely have dozens if not hundreds of runs till you get to the end of the story. So, experiment. Try out the moves and find out what works for you. Learn from your experience in the game. Every time you are knocked down, think about your mistake. 
Did you just make a timing error with your defense or would there be a technique to prevent the same type of knockdown happening? See what works and what does not, just like in real life. I, for example, have studied to be an executive secretary, but have not worked a single day in my life as one. But the skills I developed during my studies helped me immensely with all my jobs. I've met countless people who started out with a clear vision of what or who they wanted to become, but due to various life events, they had to adapt and switch tracks. Some got lost banging their heads against unbreakable walls, while others learn to look for a door or a ladder to get farther in life. So see what works for you in your situation. Then the aging mechanic in itself is also something which will affect you, the player, mentally. Not just because of the pressure of losing time, but by the change of your inner tension when you realize how small a number of chances you have left when you go for example, over 50 or 60 with losing four or five years with every knockdown. And believe me, a person over 40, this realization hits hard. How many chances do I have left before hitting those numbers in my own life? What number hits your panic button? This one aspect of the game can already wake someone up. It can already make you do more and not waste your precious years on meaningless th things and in general rethink your life. Also related to life choices, we have shortcuts. Finishing a level or finding hidden items, you can unlock shortcuts for every level. Using these can radically reduce the chance of losing precious years on your way to the boss characters. But it comes at a cost. First of all, you forgo one or even two shrines in the level. No bonuses, unlocks or full healing. But you also miss out on gathering experience points, since you have avoided a whole bunch of opponents. This aspect of the game is also quite a good life lesson. You might be presented in your life with situations as shortcuts, the easy ways, but with that you'll miss out on a whole bunch of experience, which later would be sorely needed. Imagine someone getting into a leadership position without having been a base level employee. They will simply not understand the views of the staff members and become likely horrible or simply inept leaders. I would have been most likely horrible at my team lead and supervisor jobs, but luckily my years as a base level agent in IT support and teaching people the tricks of the job were really good foundation to find effective ways to communicate with my teams and managers alike. Having had insight into multiple operational structures and working under some amazing and several ridiculously incapable bosses taught me how to prioritize issues what actions are necessary and what decisions are to be avoided at all cost. Or for my younger viewers, cheating at an exam. That will only teach you how to cheat, but not how to be good at what you are learning. Apart from all these built-in mechanics and aspects of the game, there is another quite big lesson overall. Nothing is impossible. For example, one of the achievements of the game is to finish the story at an age of 25 or lower. When you start out playing, this seems insane, absolutely ridiculously unattainable. But as you get into the rhythm of the game and start perceiving how things work, suddenly you'll notice that you just finished the boss without getting knocked down, or an entire level without taking a single hit. Practice paying attention to what you practice and persevering through the phase until muscle memory develops for the most complicated combos will pay off and you will suddenly reach those impossible goals in the end, just like in real life. Then we have the story itself. What seems to be like a straight as an arrow revenge story, bit by bit becomes something way more complicated and thought provoking. As you uncover more and more details about your opponents, their actions, life choices and changes in character, your cold served revenge seems to lose its taste a bit. I don't want to spoil things, but if you are playing, spend a bit of time reading through the detective board. It will bring you up quite a few moral questions. Then we get to the end of the story. If you went through the game for the first time, taking down the boss characters as soon as the opportunity arose, you'll have a strange revelation. You have learned nothing. <laughs> you simply force yourself through the initial concept of the revenge story and blindly made the word worse. You have ignored all the changes in the life of others and kept fighting what they were at their darkest moment. 
years ago. It is like holding a grudge against someone for decades without realizing the person who hurt you might not even exist anymore. Meaning, life can change people so radically that your most hated person could be just like you now, hating his past self and having spent years to change his ways. Some might have been punished by fate far worse than you ever could have. Others might not even realize that they caused you any problems and you might just hang on to the most malicious interpretation of an actual misunderstanding. So the lesson is, open your eyes, see what is actually going on and don't be blinded by your own imagined demons. And even if the grudge is valid, which one is better? Letting it gnaw on you for years or letting it go? Would it even matter if you avenged yourself? Would anything be better after the deed? Most likely not. So, in the game, by risking to get a few more slaps after your opponent recovers from their structure break, you can get the option to spare them. As a shadow from their past, you rose to haunt them and have shown them an unbreakable wall regarding their violent sides. The direction of their future growth is now their choice. And this would be my two cents about life lessons in the game Sifu. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And the next time someone tells you video games are useless or harmful, just send them this video and then forgive them. <laughs> If you like this video, then please hit the like button. Subscribes are also highly appreciated. And if you would like to see more of these kind of videos, there are multiple ways to support me in the description of this video. Thank you for your time. Bye.